So over the past three to four weeks, maybe a month at this point, I've been using this controller here to do all of my gaming over on Xbox. And I figured now is as good a time as any to do a review here on the channel for it. So let's get right into the video. First up, let's go over the basics. This is the Thrustmaster eSwap X Pro controller, a controller that I would call at least somewhat equivalent to the Elite Series 2 controller. So this isn't going to be a standard controller replacement for most people. This is for people who want the same sort of experience that an Elite controller offers with the programmable paddles and trigger locks. It starts at $130 on Amazon right now, which is exactly what I paid for it about a month or so ago, so maybe this is the new price. But I know that at one point it was about $160, but as of right now it is undercutting the Elite Series 2 on its price point. But as someone who already has an Elite Series 2 and enjoys it very much, I want to talk first about what this controller does differently to the Elite Series 2, because there is quite a lot on offer with this controller. I think the most noteworthy and appealing thing about this controller is that it is fully modular, meaning that I can swap things like thumbstick placements or maybe reverse the left thumbstick with the D-pad for a more PlayStation controller feel if that's your sort of thing. Now for me personally, I prefer the offset thumbstick, so that's how I keep it. But what makes this incredibly interesting in the long term is let's just say hypothetically, I start getting stick drift a year or two from now on my controller. Well, I can just go right over to the Thrustmaster website and buy myself a new thumbstick module for 20 bucks. Or maybe I just wanna redo the look of my entire controller because the standard look is starting to get a little bit boring. Well, I can also head over to their site and pick out entire new color packs for my controller. I'm actually thinking about buying this orange color pack right here. And it comes with everything I need to give my controller an orange makeover. It's got the thumbsticks, the D-pad, the side grips, and the triggers. All for 50 bucks. But it's nice to know that if something does go wrong with a thumbstick, then I can just get it replaced for 20 bucks, no questions asked. But the Thrustmaster also differs from the Elite in that it has back buttons in place of the Elite's paddles, and honestly, I kind of prefer this to the paddles. They're very much out of the way. I've never accidentally hit these buttons like I sometimes do with the Elite's paddles, which is definitely a plus for me. It also features a share button like the base Xbox Series controllers do, and this is something that I'm sure will be in the Elite Series 3 controller whenever that's announced, but for now, Thrustmaster has the advantage as far as that goes when compared to the Elite Series 2. And since we're speaking about buttons, I think it's important to mention that the Thrustmaster is one of the few third-party Xbox controllers that has its own app for programming buttons and adjusting dead zones on your thumbsticks and your trigger pulls. The app is called Thrust Mapper X, and it's actually very similar to how you customize your settings on your Elite controller via the Accessories app on Xbox. It even lets you do presets like the Elite controllers, so you can have different presets for different games and map those presets to two separate buttons on the bottom of the controller. So for example, I have my controller mapped for Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5, so whenever I play Halo, I just switch over to my Halo preset and my triggers are set for quick tapping, and my lower back buttons are set to control the left and right bumpers for equipment and grenades. And when I play Forza, I just switch over to my Horizon preset, and now my lower back buttons control X and B, which controls upshifting and downshifting for drifting. And another thing that's pretty cool is that if you have a wired gaming headset, there's buttons on the bottom of the controller where you plug the headset in that you can change the volume up or down or just hit a button to mute and unmute the mic really quick. But I think the one thing that sets this controller apart for me ultimately is the fact that it's a pretty beefy controller. I mean, one interesting interesting thing about me is that I'm actually 6 foot 11, so as you might expect, I've got abnormally giant hands compared to most people. So one problem that I always run into is any controller I use just seems to be a little bit too small for me. I mean, even with how comfortable the Elite Series 2 is, it's still just a bit too small for my hands. But this Thrustmaster fits perfectly in my hands and my fingers rest onto the dent of the back button so my fingers aren't constantly hitting the back buttons by accident. And the thumbsticks are just slightly higher than they are on the normal Xbox controller 
which is nice for me because with the normal Xbox controller, my thumb kind of just overlaps the thumbstick, so I'm not even using the print of my thumbs on the thumbstick. When I'm using the base Xbox controller, it kind of feels like I'm using the middle of my thumbs to move and look around on the thumbsticks. And I gotta say, after years and years of this being the case, I kind of just got used to it. But it's nice to finally have a controller where I can use my thumbs like you're normally supposed to, with my thumbs on top of the thumbsticks where they should be. I know that's a small little detail, but it's something that matters a lot to me, so that's why it's in this review. Now so far you might be thinking I've described a somewhat perfect controller, but there are some downsides to this controller that I want to be upfront about. First of all, I think the most notable downside to this controller is the fact that it is wired, so you cannot use it wireless, which is pretty annoying. But at the same time, considering the fact that it's a third party controller, it's to be expected, so I don't really dock any points for it because I knew that when I clicked the purchase button on this controller. And up next, I think that if you're someone like me who is a regular user of the Elite Series 2 and its trigger locks, you might be just a tad disappointed to find out that the Thrustmaster only has one step trigger locks, as opposed to the Elite V2's two step trigger lock. This basically just means that the shortest trigger pull on the Thrustmaster is still a bit longer than the shortest trigger pull on the Elite V2. And then the final complaint is that there's no real grips on this controller. In fact, what looks like grips on this controller seems to be there more for aesthetic than actually functioning as a grip. I mean, it's not slippery by any means, and I certainly haven't had any issues with them, as they do still seem to keep your hands cool while playing, it's just a big step down from the Elite V2's amazing grip handles. So overall, the Thrustmaster eSwap X Pro controller, despite its flaws, is my go-to controller for gaming right now, even over my Elite V2. With a bigger frame and a fully modular design, it's a no-brainer for me. And if I had to give it a grade, I'd go with a very solid A-. But what do you guys think? Do you have a Thrustmaster? And if so, what's your experience with the controller been like? or maybe you have more questions for me about the controller. Either way, drop a comment below and let's have a discussion. Leave a like if you liked the video, and please remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you're enjoying the content and want to stay up to date on all my latest videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.